Good morning. Timer didn't go off, or at least I didn't hear it. So I'm a little bit behind. Let's see here now. Where did we end up last time? I think we got to the point where it was verse 37, where they put the sign above his head, Jesus, King of the Jews. And so in verse 38, it says, then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and the other on the left, or another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down, now down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. So, we begin and end this section with the mention of the two robbers. And we're not going to see it in Matthew's gospel, where one of those two robbers ends up getting saved. And, you know, it's it's just worth noting, you know, there's, there's no contradiction by any means here. Uh, all we are looking at um, is the fact that people can have a changed heart relatively quickly. In Luke's gospel, it says one of the criminals who hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do not... You, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And Jesus, then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you've come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. And so, two different accounts. And likely, it started with these guys mocking Jesus. And as one continues to mock, the other's mocks become silence. And silence eventually turns into rebuke. And his rebuke of the other criminal eventually turns into a petition for pardon from Jesus. And so we see a heart get transformed there on the cross, or on a cross, I should say. We never quite know if, when, and where our loved ones will come to know the Lord. This guy, he obviously took it down to the wire, <laughs> down to the, to the very last moment uh, before his heart was transformed. But I don't think we should ever lose hope because lives do get transformed even at the last moment. People like using the example of the thief on the cross because it, you know, he, he never went to Sunday school. He never took communion, never got baptized, never did any of these things. At the very last moment, he entered into paradise along with everyone else who had faithfully followed Jesus, who had faithfully followed the law. Uh, these Jews, you know, as this, this is a transitionary period, you might say. And it's just a good reminder that in the last moment, our loved ones can come to know the Lord. It's not what we want to see. It's definitely not what we want to see, but it's something we can have hope. And sometimes just drawing near to death is the thing that finally gets people to come around. When they finally see that the end is near, it's that thought 
that is sobering enough to get them to come to the Lord. Now, speaking of deathbed conversions, should we ever expect, you know, should, should anyone, not us, not the we, but they, ever expect and plan on a deathbed conversion? Well, you know, we should give people good answers, accurate answers. Um, and by no means should we give um, false statements in order to scare people into making the decision we want them to make. What I mean is, is if someone asks, well, can I just live my life however I want to live it and then accept Jesus at the last second? The answer is yes. That's, that's accurate. But, and this is the but, because that, that is accurate. The truth is, though, is one, only an authentic receiving of Jesus at the last minute applies. And I just can't imagine someone living their life however they want, and then authentically changing their mind at the last minute, that they're going to plan on a change of heart. You can't plan a change of heart. Changes of heart either happen or they don't. You don't just forecast and decide, at this date, I will change my heart. It's not how it works. And so we should be honest. There are heathen who, like the thief on the cross, he lived his life however he wanted. And here at the last moments, he gives his life to the Lord. But he didn't plan on that. It just authentically happened. And so, got to warn people, there's, there's no opportunity and no guarantees that you'll be able to authentically convert at the last second. Either your heart truly is changed or it's not. And we really can't force that change. You can't just make conviction happen. If you weren't convicted before your deathbed, you won't be able to muster up your own conviction on your deathbed. So, it's a fine line there, but I like to just be as straightforward and honest with people as possible. And I think they respect that. Um, they respect that, you know, giving an honest answer. Yes, in theory, you could live your life however you want up until your deathbed. But if you don't have a true change of heart, you know, maybe you could use this, right? Because you guys are disciples. And so you're trying to learn this stuff so that you can repeat it and reuse it in order to disciple others. I would say this. It would be easier for you. I'm going to pretend you're all Republicans. It would be easier for you as a devout Republican to authentically become a passionate Democrat in the last moment, truly standing behind the Democrats and what they believe and what they think, bleeding donkey the whole way, that would be easier than to authentically change from a heathen and hedonistic serving yourself lifestyle to truly putting your faith in Jesus at the last minute. You just don't plan those things. Many of Republicans have become Democrats, and many of Democrats have become Republicans. That happens too. But you don't just plan on, I'm going to have a paradigm shift of all that I believe on this date. So just as an example, you might share that one with them. It's like, well, I'm just going to accept Jesus, you know, down the road. It's kind of like, well, it's just like saying I'm planning on switching political parties someday and truly believing in my heart of that transformation. It's like, no, it just doesn't work that way. You don't just shift overnight authentically. 
That's the key. So we're going to keep moving. We'll probably, uh, well, we'll see what we get done tomorrow, but we're going to move forward with the crucifixion and be wrapping up the chapter this week probably. So you guys take care. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Tonight's a Spanish Bible study at our church. If you know Spanish speakers who want to have a Spanish Bible study in the Lower Valley, send them over to Revival Church at 630. Um, youth study at my place. That's also kids gather around 630. We start at 7. So you guys take care. Lord bless you. And I'll see you around.